Hey guys, it's Anthony Bandiero here, attorney and senior legal instructor for Blutico Law Enforcement Training, bringing you another roadside chat from San Diego, California. All right, so the question here, and the, the lighting is bad, I'm, I'm, I'm parked and the sun's in my face over here, so um, hopefully that's not too distracting, but it is what it is. All right, so the question here is whether officers can re-enter a home to collect plain view evidence. Okay, so here is the scenario that is um, that is um, behind this question. So this question comes from an officer in Texas and basically he says this, you're dispatched to a domestic call with where a firearm was being discharged. Uh, upon arrival, officers enter their home to do a protective sweep to determine whether or not there's any um, injured parties, okay? And that's question number one, right? Part of this scenario. That's good. And while inside the house, they see a firearm with a bullet hole in the door. They then exit. They talk to the spouses. They, did, they, they confirm that that gun was used during the domestic. They then re-enter and seize the gun as evidence okay so the final question is is the officer wants to know can we can we re-enter and if we can re-enter um can we also collect like blood samples can we take pictures that type of thing okay let's walk through this one at a time this this um roadside chat may be a tad longer than usual because there's a few components here but i want to give you my feedback now you know, a lot of these cases are, if this went to court, this is going to be very fact driven. More facts need to come out. We have more questions, but let me just kind of give you the general guidelines. Number one, what about the initial entry for the protective sweep? Well, we know that under the fourth amendment, we can make a protective sweep when we have a reason to believe that people inside the house could be injured right? And there's some form of exigency to go along with that, right? So I think we have that here, right? We have a domestic. We know that a, a gun got fired. There could be other people in the house. Um, if there was any contrary evidence, like so for example, if the neighbors, I'm just kind of guessing here, but the neighbors said, look, we know they don't have any kids. We know nobody else lives there, but we're the ones calling and they're both out in front, uh, it gets a little weaker. But I think courts are going to bend over backwards to uphold the entry under exigency. I mean, we know a gun was fired. Um, it could have been somebody in there and so forth that got shot. I think the courts are gonna uphold it. So check, I think we're in the house. Second, we see the gun, and now we have probable cause that that gun was used during the commission of a crime, right? during a domestic uh guns should not be fired in houses and there's also a bullet hole to match why the cops did not seize the gun initially it would be a question for me for tactics um uh, i don't know I, I i think we probably should just seize the gun right then and there under plain view or under uh, uh for protective doctrines you know just to keep officer safety but that's neither here or there let's talk about the officers leaving and re-entering Generally, generally speaking, when you leave, you and there's nobody left in the house, right? And you know there's nothing else exigency going on. You do lose your right to be into the house. Now, to re-enter the house, you have to have another reason, like consent, another form of exigency, and so forth. So that that is the general rule. Now, there is an, a recognized exception to seize plain view evidence when you had to leave the home and you immediately re-enter. Um, it's kind of known as the necessary in a, in a continuous doctrine. So first, was it necessary to leave the home? And second, was it continuous? Meaning, did you wait too long for it to become stale and now you lost the home? I don't see why the officers um, sh would need to you know leave the home and not, you know, uh, get the evidence right then and there. So an example, of this is you're inside the home, you're doing your protective sweep, and then you hear your partner in a fight outside. 
you go out there and you you get the uh, the suspect in custody that's assaulting the officer, and then you immediately re-enter to go grab the plain view evidence that you saw. That would be an example of that, I think. But um, I don't see that here under the facts. Why they had to leave? It looks like they were maybe a little doubtful that they could seize it in the first place, and and excuse me, and, and they re-entered. Um, now the other re-entry could be the fact that you know there's a gun um, that could be readily available to somebody, um, to the husband, for example, if he, if he broke loose and, and went into the home and got the gun and assaulted officers, but he's probably in handcuffs and, um, there may not be a legitimate reason there. So I'm just, that as from a court's point of view, it seems a little bit, a little bit messy. Um, but you know, uh, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be reasonable. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I now, as far, so I, I guess I wish I had a better answer for you. It depends on the, what the court believes, right? If they believe that you had a reason for leaving the house and you immediately re-entered, I think your evidence is saved. Uh, they're probably going to be looking for that reason, right? Because they don't really want to lose this evidence. Um, as far as taking pictures, yes, you can take pictures. As far as collecting blood, well, blood is plain view, right? That's probable cause. Um, but you want to be careful about crossing the line into processing the scene for evidence, right? If the court believes you are processing the scene, then that is not permitted under the, there is no crime scene exception. So you would need consent or a warrant. Um, so I don't think they're going to look at that as, um, as necessary processing the crime scene, but that would be the question for the court. All right. And that is pretty much it okay this is not a um a very simple fact pattern uh for for me to answer within a few minutes it, it it's there's more questions than probably answers but there you go getting into the house requires some form of exigency leaving the house and re-entering requires a, a, a recognized exception like consent or the necessary and continuous doctrine you had to leave and you re-entered you didn't waste any time and you grab the plain view evidence and no matter what you cannot process crime scenes you cannot search for evidence under these scenarios i just given you you can only grab and go is essentially what plain view allows grab and go hey that's uh that's what i have for you um hopefully it helped and uh this is a uh, again i just want to remind you it's a very complicated scenario uh, very fact driven we want more questions before we go to court on this one and uh and so forth but there you go so keep your questions coming please if you like this and, and move the ball forward even an inch please hit the like button subscribe share with your friends let's build up the subscribers um you know i do like doing this and i want to make sure that uh, officers are getting value out of it until next time stay safe when it comes to legal training we're the gold standard visit blue to gold.com or call 888- 579-7796 today to purchase the search and seizure survival guide, register for a class, or learn how to bring our search and seizure training to your agency.